There are certain moments in life where it's absolutely essential that one embraces the inner anime. Amongst such weeb-tastic moments, I can't think of anything more fitting than when playing the longsword in Monster Hunter. That's right, this weapon is lovingly caricatured as the weep stick. And when you see some of the things it can do, the style and the flash, of course it's got that reputation. And I absolutely adore the longsword gameplay. I think it's some of the most fun you can have in Monster Hunter World and that everyone should check it out. If instead you are more of the persuasion of the Brotherhood of Bonk, you're gonna definitely want to watch the Hammer video I put out. I'm Lighted Up Dan, and on this channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes, and MMOs, including Monster Hunter World and Grand Blue Fantasy. And with that said, Let's get to it. As a very quick overview of the longsword, it's got really good range and your movement is not impeded too bad, you're just sort of moving at a medium pace. The combat centers around the spirit gauge, so this is one of the weapons that does have a meter. You can see this in the top left corner just below your sharpness. As we fire out our basic combo, which is repeatable, we go from overhead slash into thrust into rising slash back into overhead slash. The three string combo can be repeated indefinitely, noting that every strike that you land will fill up the spirit gauge. You can also do a really quick basic thrust attack. This is actually pretty useful because certain moves require you to be mid combo for you to execute them, meaning you can just fire out this thrust and then do those moves. One such move is the fade slash, which again can only be executed mid combo. This is a super handy evasive maneuver which allows you to attack while stepping backwards, tilting the analog stick either side whilst you're doing the fade slash, we'll see you hop to the corresponding direction instead of backwards. Your Y basic combo attacks, B thrust attacks, and Y and B fade slashes can be interchangeably mixed in throughout a combo string. All those slashes have filled up our spirit gauge, so let's use it with the spirit blade attacks. Repeatedly hitting right trigger will fire out the spirit blade combo. One follows into two, follows into three, and then finally finishes with the spirit round slash. Landing that final hit is absolutely crucial because it levels up your spirit gauge. You can now see it's got a white border around it. This border will slowly deplete. Level 1 depletes really slowly so you don't really need to worry about that too much. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to increase this to level 2 and then once more over to level 3. Be mindful that you will need spirit gauge to do the spirit blade attack. So build that back up with some attacks, fire out the spirit blade combo, land the spirit round slash and level up to the next level. The reason you want to build up your spirit gauge levels is because there are two high damage attacks you can use that actually expand a spirit gauge level. Since Iceborne, you can do the special sheath, which is a super anime sword stance where you sheath your sword. From here, you can do the EI slash, which is a quick attack that'll have your spirit gauge gradually increasing once you land it. Really useful for topping it up. I like to try and make sure that this is constantly active as best as I can. And then you've got the move that actually consumes the spirit gauge level I was just talking about, the EI spirit slash. This is a really big damage attack, super flashy, and can only only be done from the special sheath stance, which you can only get into mid combo. The second bigger damage hit is what's consuming the spirit gauge level and scales depending on what level you're at. So the yellow level 2 spirit gauge attack will do significantly less than the red level 3 one, but it's still pretty strong. Okay, you're following along so far, but this is when it starts to get really flashy and really cool. Timed correctly, the EI spirit slash has iframes and will allow you to slice through an attack attack. What's more, performing it like this will in fact not consume a spirit gauge level. You even don't actually need to land the attack, you just need to slice through the monster's attack. This can make for some really fun, flashy and highly aggressive gameplay. Your damage output capabilities here can be absolutely massive. You can also get into the special sheath stance directly from the end of the spirit blade combo. This is done after landing the spirit round slash and instead of allowing your character to put the longsword back on its back, you instead press right trigger and A for the special sheath stance. The other big attack you can do which consumes one level of spirit gauge is the spirit helm breaker attack. This is initiated after doing the spirit thrust attack which can only be done mid combo, including after a fade slash, an EI slash 
or an EI spirit slash. The longsword is very modular this way, it's super cool. After landing your spirit thrust attack, your character will jump into the air and slam down with a helm breaker attack, which punches in a load of hits. Like the EI spirit slash, this does more damage the higher spirit gauge level you are. A fantastic attack, but easily missed, so probably best saved when the monster's downed. A really nice combo if you're preferably at level 3 spirit gauge, is to go from an EI spirit slash into a helm breaker. Really good damage and super flashy. The spirit blade attack is quite long and cumbersome, takes a while to get out, and uses up a lot of your active spirit gauge. If you begin the combo after a fade slash, however, you will be put straight into spirit blade 3, the last part of the combo, which you then follow up with the spirit round slash. There's one more very key element of the longsword, as well as the EI spirit slash having an iframe attack. You can also do an evasive maneuver called foresight slash. This can only be done mid combo and uses up all of your active spirit gauge. Timing the foresight slash correctly to iframe through a monster's attack will allow you to follow up instantly with a spirit round slash attack, instantly moving you up a spirit gauge level. By landing this, you're able to forego the entire spirit blade combo and you just instantly go up a level. It's super efficient, but hard to do. This isn't something you're going to be able to land reactively for the most part. You're going to need to know the monster's attacks. That's why it's so tough. It demands a lot of knowledge and good placement too. You will need to land the spirit round slash like with the spirit blade combo. Otherwise, you won't go up a level and you'll still Still use up all of your active spirit gauge doing the foresight slash. By piecing all these things together, the EI slash to constantly build up your spirit gauge, using your spirit gauge to land foresight slashes, leveling up the spirit gauge from that, to then do EI special slashes and spirit helm breakers, eye framing and countering these attacks, really sleek and smooth, very cool and flashy, super goddamn anime. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do the spirit blade attack though, it's a fantastic combo which does a lot of damage and you also have mind's eye during that combo, so your attacks aren't going to bounce off the monster. Jumping off a ledge allows you to initiate a jumping spirit blade attack if that's something you want to do. Just another option in your kit. Unless you're using that clutch claw decoration, I forget what it's called. The longsword requires two clutch claw attacks to tenderize apart, but it's a really fast clutch claw attack and it's really useful to drop that slinger ammo as well. As you can probably tell from this video, there aren't many downsides to longsword. It truly is an absolutely fantastic weapon. It's super fun, really flashy, highly aggressive, wonderful damage. Everyone should try it out, for sure. It will take you a while to build the muscle memory and find your rhythm with it, but once you do, oh my goodness, it is so satisfying. Not many people know this, even veterans within the community, but whilst you're playing Longsword, if you actually make anime noises IRL, it significantly increases your damage output. The ones I recommend are Sia-Chia-Chia! Kia! Try them out and let me know how you get on. And with that, friends, I think that's everything. But if there's anything I've forgotten, do be sure to let us know in the comments so that we can all enjoy Longsword together and learn from each other as a community. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe for more action RPGs, MMOs, and roguelikes. I stream Monster Hunter World with open lobbies over on my Twitch, so do be sure to drop a follow there. And I've just recently opened up my previously closed Discord community because I just wanted to get all of you involved. All the links are below in the description. But until next time, I'll see you in the new world.